Hey, what is going on, wonderful people? Thank you for stopping by. You got Sterkules here with my TPA Season 3, Week 2, Battle Against Zach, uh, the head honcho of the league. Well, the part one of the two-headed monster, which is Zach and Ben, the commissioners. Uh, Zach is kind of who put the league together, from what I know, though. From what I can tell, I'm guessing it was probably him and Ben. Once again, equally kind of double teaming it with their thoughts and they do a wonderful job running this league it's a super fun one um we're going into this battle facing zach who is 2-0 and and i'm 2-0 and as well so if you look at this uh battle before it took place this actually took place sunday so i'm doing some uh i'm doing a recap battle wasn't able to do a live battle unfortunately um but if you looked at it before this uh, we were both very high up on the league standings both being 2 and 0 and I had just a slightly higher differential so I was one in the division he was two uh, this is two straight years of being in the same division last year we had a really close game I think I won a 1-0 and there were some hacks involved and hacks as in him missing two 90% poltergeists to close out the game um and he had a lot of that last season uh he if I'm being real, no offense to any other coach in the league, Zach probably had the best team in the league last year, and he probably put together the best season. <laughs> but because of a few games like this, that um, like that I won the first one against him, that was our first ever meeting, um, and I think we both played really well, and I was actually happy with how I played, but he got hexed out at the end. He lost because of that, and that kind of happened to him in the quarterfinals too. Uh, he missed like four stone edges, and I think he missed he, – he just – he had so many misses, it was just unbelievable. And so we actually didn't get to meet up again in the playoffs. So this is kind of his chance to get back at me for, for the luck I had last year. Um, so real quick looking at our team. Uh, and I forgot to pull up his team ahead of time. We'll just show the six once we get there for the battle. Um, super professional, as always, <laughs> for getting to do stuff. But we got Mystery, the Spectrier with Focus Sash. Uh, I liked this as potentially a lead, or just if he didn't have rocks up for me to set up a nasty plot late game and hit hard. Um, enough speed to outspeed. I think everything on his team, if I'm remembering right, did he have anything that outsped? We'll just have to see. Um, Shadow Ball hits everything on his team except Incineroar, which is what Mudshot was for. Now, even at plus two, Mudshot was not going to be killing, but if I had him whittled down, um, that's just something for that. And then will o -Wisp was for something like Celesteela that just hits really hard that I'm <laughs> that I'm afraid of that I don't necessarily want to sit in front of and take damage from but if I um will o -Wisp, I can a little bit better king me with the culverberry to take a hit better from incineroar because I'm very sure incineroar is coming in this match and it's pretty scary on top of just other things on his team that could have culverberry we had scald just for pretty much always run that on uh slow king nice for Nice for super effective damage, but the burn chance on a lot of things. Um, flamethrower for basically for Celesteela, and he does have a few ice types as well, so that's nice to have in the back pocket on a switch. And then Toxic and Teleport, uh, pretty standard, especially defensive set. Um, but if I have screens up plus Culber, I can live usually pretty much any hit from an center or even if it's slightly boosted. So that's nice, even without the defense, with just special defense being able to switch on on other things. It kind of helps to make it an answer to physical and special threats. Um, Grimson Lightning with the dual screens two weeks in a row, and I kind of almost hate to do that, but I just think screens are really helpful against his team, against some of his threats. Um, I hope it's not too predictable have running dual screens twice in a row uh, with Light Clay. Both times may not have been the best thing just because he does have some removal and he's probably expecting it but once again if I can keep those screens up it just really helps so brick break was because I thought he might bring screens of his own he's got a vanillix so that sets up the hail and can run aurora veil very easily and makes his already super bulky offensively team uh offense huge hitting team with a lot of bulk things like Rhyperior and Celesteela um, just super scary um, so I want to keep the screens off his side of the field uh, without having to defog my own away or defog my own hazards away. In fact, you're seeing here no hazard removal this week. I'm not as worried about that as him just setting up behind screens and thrashing me. <laughs> uh, and then Darkest Lariat. Uh, the dark damage just hits things like Jellicent, hits things on his team that are boosted and ignores stat changes and hits um, Latios. 
He has Latios or Latias? He has Latios. So, next up we got Frost and Powers, Choice Scarf. Um, Choice Scarf on any other Rotom forms is just always really good because a lot of them, they have their electric stab, they can pivot with Volt Switch, and then their um, other move usually hits really hard. So, Bolt Beam, Electric, and Ice hits pretty much everything. And then Trick, if we can trick a Choice Scarf onto something like a Rhyperior, Jellicent, a um, few other things. I'm blanking on a lot of his teammates. We're, we'll see once we get there. But And then Under Skarmor and Spiroids. So here we go. I forgot to make a video on it that I made some free agency transactions. So in my last week, you saw Dragonite there. And you probably saw one of the comments, someone said, hey, it's unfortunate that this is the last time we'll be seeing Dragonite. And it's true. Um, brought Dragonite once and replaced it. So I dropped Steelix and Dragonite and picked up Flygon and Skarmory. So I still keep a defensive um, Steel type with Skarmory uh, after losing Steelix. I have now two ground types still to help with electric moves with, uh, with my Flygon and my Nidoking. Even though neither of them are super bulky, they're still immune, so that's nice. Um, I keep an offensive dragon type with Flygon. It gives me pivoting now. I hugely needed a U-Turner. Um, Flygon can also defog. Flygon can also roost on top of a lot of moves it gets. It can be a physical or special attacker and has a great move pool on each side. And um, for Skarmory, just Steel and Flying is such an amazing defensive type. Only two weaknesses. Um, that I can hopefully patch up a little bit with the rest of my team. And that defense stat is huge. A body press coming off of this thing hurts. Um, and you can make Skarmory offensive. I do believe it gets Swords Dance, and then you can run, like, Iron Head, Brave Bird with weak armor. It's kind of cool. So, But it will be defensive a lot. And Skarmory is... Er, uh, and Flygon is just nice. It's a really good late game cleaner with Dragon Dance, and it's just one of the best choice Scarfers around. So I'm really excited to have those two on the team. There's a few other moves I'm considering making still, but for right now, the rest of the team is still the same. Uh, it's hard to look at losing Dragonite and not think your team got a little worse, but I think my team got better because I think I patched up holes, and I still have a ton of firepower on my team. And I think Skarmory is a better defensive mon than Steelix, obviously, because it can heal itself with Roost. So as much as it hurts losing two really good mons, I gained two really good mons back. And with the point things I actually did is Dragonite was 180 points and Steelix was 80. That adds up to 260. Um, Skarmory is 140 and Flygon is 100. 240. So that means I actually have 20 um, flex points to work with now. So I have two more free agency moves, or maybe three, two or three more that I can make, and I've got 20 extra points, so I can potentially upgrade something um, if I make another change. So that just that makes things a little easier, making changes going forward. So, But this is the team today. Um, ideally, um, wear things down with Mystery and Frost and Powers, and ideally, um, I want to set up to where Flygon could win at the end. So um, under Skarmor and King Me are taking hits, and then Grimmsnarl's hopefully keeping screens off and getting screens on. Kind of, it's just screen control is my plan for it for the game. So, and hopefully with Lumberry, Flygon's able to get up a Dragon Dance and really do a whole lot of work against his team. So let's go ahead and hop into this game. Got things on really slow. Hopefully, I'm gonna try not to pause at all because that usually starts messing with my video. Um, if I forget and do it, well, let's just hope the video is still working. So, in fact, now's a good time to check and make sure the recording's still going well. My video seems to be working okay. Only time will tell. So, we see he's got Jellicent Weezing. That's who I kept forgetting. Galarian Weezing. Super scary. Really checks Flygon. Um, I wanted to bring Iron Tail or Steel Wing on Flygon. Um, I really wanted to bring a special Flygon to do a lot of work against his team, but if he was like AV Celesteela or AV Incineroar, my team was just so special. I needed that physical threat, and I feel, felt like Dragon Dance could do a lot, but I really need to get Weezing worn down to, to be able to do anything with Flygon. Uh, we're going to find out. Incineroar is very scary. Um, Intimidate, Assault Vest potentially, potentially a setup set, um, maybe just to pivot around. Celesteela... And Latios are obviously his scariest mons, but everything on the field is scary because Rhyperior um, can set up with weakness policy at any point. Uh, can set up hazards for him. So 
we're just going to go ahead and hop into it. Let's see how this goes. So we have our leads. Um, and we see that I'm going to start off with Spectrier. He's going to start off with Celesteela. We actually haven't seen Spectrier. There we go. And I don't love this matchup because he's going to blast me. And I just really can't do a whole lot with Shadow Ball. So I go ahead and just burn him from the get-go. And that's actually going to end up being really nice. Because we see he's at least partially um, physical. That Heavy Slam does 37%. I need to remember that for something that happens later. Um, still a good chunk of damage. But Mystery's kind of frail. So we're going to save it. Get into Skarmory. We're going to see if he wants to Heavy Slam again. And he does. So we get to scout that out, and now we know he can hit Skarmory, but I make a mistake. Um, it's Flamethrower that this gets, and I was thinking it was Thunderbolt. So I go ahead and switch into Rotom Frost, thinking he won't do much, then I can either Volt Switch or toss off a of Blizzard. And he hits me with Flamethrower, and I realize I'm an idiot. Um, Celesteela does not learn Thunderbolt. It does learn Flamethrower, so I had Flygon and Slowbro as potential switches, but instead I take a lot of damage. On this which is not great i double thinking he might just go rhyperior um but he's gonna go ahead and just flamethrower again which is smart because <laughs> he would have killed had i stayed in or anything like that i don't remember what i do here there's a few things i wanted to do um i wanted to toxic but he, i was in front of a celesteela so i think yeah I, I just played a very safe early went for the flamethrower probably really wouldn't have done a whole lot but at least wouldn't have let him just do nothing for free. I wanted to see what Celesteel would do. He switches. We see a light screen. I don't think I toxic here since he has Celesteela and Weezing. So I teleport out first time around. Um, don't take any damage, really. So nothing huge about Regenerator. But I don't think there's much he can do here. So I believe I'm just going to set up light screen of my own. Okay. I, brick I choose to brick break first and just go ahead and get rid of those screens right away. Um, which I guess makes sense because now when I get light screen, I've got more turns of it. But the problem is leaving up his screens may have been better just to see what he would have wanted to do with defog because he would have had to get rid of his own screen. So I light screen. We're going to see what he wants to do. He throws off a strange steam, which does 30%, which is both a lot and not a lot. Like considering it's super effective, we're taking that okay. But it's also like since that's health, I'm not getting back. 30% is not fun to take. So we see he is defog, and there's not a whole lot I can do here. Um, in fact, I don't think I like the playmaker. I think I just scald, and as he goes Latios, we're just gonna do nothing. Yeah. So early game, um, not going awful, but I am really mad at all that damage I took on Rotom Frost, and I feel like he's reading me pretty well. I feel like I'm not getting a whole lot accomplished, but at least here I think he's gonna set up screens again. So I throw off a toxic and miss. And all I can think is, well, <laughs> I deserve that. <laughs> After him missing two Poltergeists last year, here's my Toxic miss. And I'm hoping that I've paid my price because now he gets a free switch in. Um, we'll just have to see. We'll have to see. So he uses Aromatherapy, which is really good. Um, I've drafted Galarian Weezing before, but I ended up not keeping it. Um, because I wanted a Wish Passer on the team I had it on. I think I ended up getting... I did, that doesn't matter what I ended up getting. But I didn't know it had aromatherapy, so that's a really nice play. So I want to see what he's going to do. So I go ahead and just trick a choice scarf onto him. And I hate that I just die here. Uh, he's got flamethrower. I needed that intel, though, to, d to know if he had it. All I knew that he had was defog and strange stream, strange seam, and aromatherapy. So now I know his set. Um, and he is pretty crippled with the choice scarf. Because he's not going to be able to do a whole lot on a situation like this. But I really needed Rotom. So I'm not happy that I let it go down that early. Um, would have been able to make that play had I not lost so much damage earlier on uh, the Celesteela switch. So had I kept that around, I would have been able to trick and take a hit and still be alive. So we go in on what we know is the Heavy Slam here. I'm trying to remember what I do. Since I've got to reflect up, he switches out. Um, we know he's a mixed set. We find out the rest of his set later for the most part. Um, but the reflect is kind of keeping him back from doing what he wants to do. I think, what, is he going to defog again? 
Okay, yeah, I'm going to get up my screen, and then I think he defogs smartly because his screens are about to run out, so he doesn't lose anything from that. Once again, I just feel like I'm getting red a lot, so I've got to start making better plays because um, I feel like I'm pretty behind at this point. And I'm with Rotom down, I'm honestly not feeling good at this point. I, I, know I need to make some big plays to try to get things um, back because even at this point, a whole lot of his team – isn't getting super worn down yet. He's still very high. So I gotta start doing something. I don't think he'll stay in wanting to get burnt again. Turns out he wasn't too worried about that. I think he thought I would double. So he goes for the Mega Horn and we see that's for Slow King. So I go ahead and burn him again thinking that I'm going to live here. As I told you earlier, uh, remember I took 37% when initially when he was burnt. And I was too lazy to go back and look, and I thought I only took 33%. So I was like, you know what, I'm not going to live. Or I was like, I'm not going to have much left, but I'm at least still going to be alive. And so I, I figured let's burn him, and then we could double out. And now I just lost Spectre for nothing. So wearing down a lot of his team is going to be tough. I kind of have to Fire Punch here as much as I don't want to. In fact, Fire Punch, I think, was like a roll to kill. But I just had to do it just because um, Celesteela, even Burnt, was going to start becoming a huge threat. Um, and Dragon Dancing wasn't an option because Weezing could come in on that anyway. So I just had to get some damage. That did help me start calking out Weezing, figuring out a little bit of what I could do. So <clears throat> I think he doubles. Probably not wanting to get toxic. Is that what happened? And I get up my rocks. I'm trying to remember what happens here. Okay, I double into Slow King. <clears throat> and once again, I'm just trying to make some reads too. See what he's got. He fire punches. Um, this does get Mega Horn and possibly even Throat Chop too. So, but I we do see he's going to switch. Probably expecting a Scald. I think I was going to take the hit and just teleport out if I'm remembering right. Yeah. So. Now I'm back into Grim. He can't really let me Darkest Lariat on him. So I believe we think we know he's going Weezing because Weezing just checks big time. So that's really nice to start getting this Rocks damage on him. We're getting him down. And uh, if I think he's going to stay in, which I do because he has Flamethrower, that means I get to get off an Iron Head on this. And now I'm starting to get pretty happy because as down as I've felt, now we're in range where if I can get Flygon in on something up to plus two, which here would have been a possibility of a time um, that I could have switched. Well, no, because he went into Latios. But I need to get Flygon up to plus one. And from here, I'm starting to think it might be able to kill. That's right. I roost because I know Flamethrower is not going to kill. So I, I want to see if he keeps spamming it or if he switches. So now I go Grimmsnarl. Always a good check to this. The, what does he hit me with? Mystical Fire, which does a decent amount. So we're starting to see he's got Mystical Fire and Light Screen. I'm assuming he probably has Reflect, too. So is his last move Draco? Is his last move Psyshock? Is it Surf? Um, trying to figure out his set was pretty tough. I can't remember. Do I go for Brick Break here? I think I do. Yeah, okay. So now his Weezing um, is pretty much all but dead, which is really nice. So I do Brick Break. I really considered doubling there, but I just did not like having him having a Celesteela or Rhyperior behind screens. So I go Skarm. He defogs. I think I know he's going to defog, so I set up rocks again. Right? Oh, he defogged on the switch. Okay. So now I set up rocks on his switch. Um... Yeah, I don't know if that was the best play. I don't know. I actually like the chip I was getting. So now he goes into Cheeto Fingers. I get off a big body press, 51%. Uh, so I think I'm probably going to kill. Um, I was not surprised to the weakness policy, but I was also really not happy. So we see that Flame Charge doing 46%. But after Leftovers, I get up to 60 So I can take another one of these, and I should be able to kill with body press here. And um, this is huge because if I don't kill here, I might just lose. And I get crit. So <laughs> I officially have now paid my dues for the two Poltergeist misses last year. So hopefully the 
hopefully the hex gods um, consider my debt paid because uh, that was huge. Um, I don't know if I ever beat him here, but the difference is hugely indifferential. So I can go here on this flame charge. Um, I needed to reflect up basically to be able to for slow king to potentially live. So I can, I could have gone tried to go into slow king here, and I probably should have. Um, it was just hard to keep him from getting up so high. At a certain point, I could have lived a power trip um, with Culberberry plus reflect and killed him off, and was hoping Flygon maybe could still pull it out. But really, it was never in the cards because now he's got enough. Um, boosts to where a power trip's going to kill through it so i don't know if you saw in the comments but i called it as soon as i saw weakness policy uh i was like oh crap i'm about to get owned by power trip aren't i so here it looks like i'm going to get six owed um luckily uh we do get a clutch live and so we only get five owed here but i'm trying not to be salty because last year he got hacked so much he kind of deserves <laughs> things to go the other way um and I think he deserved the win still. I think he outplayed me. But I just want to see how it would have played out. Um, could I have at least pulled it close? Or Flygon, I think, potentially could have won still. And I know we always think that when we lose. And, you know, like, oh, but I think this set could have won. But looking at his spreads after the game, I think if Skarmory lived, um, we should have killed back with Body Press. Now I would have had to check if that was a roll. If it weren't a roll and he lived, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. But if Body Press would have killed then he would have had to either come in Revenge Skarmory. So I would have guessed, do I have something in that's faster? Can I roost Skarmory back up? Do I need to just sacrifice it and let it die? It depends what he would have brought in to kill off Skarmory after this. Like, if it were Latios, um, I'd probably go Slow King there. Uh, but yeah, this is just where it starts to get tough. Because um, Latios potentially could have gotten screens up again. So I think he probably won anyway. But I, I just want to see how it would have played out. Um, what would have been his revenge to come in and kill Skarmory? What would have been my switch? Could I Basically, could I have gotten Flygon in to Dragon Dance without him getting up screens? Uh, if so, I think I could have won because Flygon at plus one would kill fire with Fire Punch. Um, with the Rocks damage at plus one, Earthquake should kill because he was HP and Special Defense. Um, this would have died coming in on rocks. You would have died to a plus one, um, dragon claw. And then I believe I had a really good chance to kill Rhyperior, um, with a plus one earthquake since I was adamant, um, and he was not running HP. He was running more attack and speed, but, um, the, he also would have had a chance to just kill Flygon. Like I would have had to have found a way to get my Flygon in without him getting up a Trick Room or without him getting up some screens so that he could live a hit and win with Rhyperior. So my guess is I probably like 75% of the time he still, at least 66% of the time, let's say, he probably still won um, even if Skarmory uh, lived that and I killed Incineroar back. I just, I would have died in much less embarrassing fashion <laughs> and I would have saved some differential, which really would have helped with the sandings. Um, but I, you know, he just played better. Like I said, I think a very small percentage of the time I figured out a way to salvage the win. Most of the time I think Zach would have won. So I would say so far Zach has just had my number because, you know, we've split the series, but his win was very definitive just now, and mine last year was like, I definitely felt like I got lucky in it. Um, so that was tough. That might be an old finals, or not an old finals, that might be an old classic battle I might upload sometime, our battle last year. So uh, looking at the standings now, I hope I didn't come across too salty, especially if you're watching Zach. Uh, you deserved the win. You played great. I was salty about that crit, but I messaged him right after and said, hey, I think... The crit mattered, but I think it only mattered for differential. Like, I I don't, I don't think I would have pulled it together in one. I just would have liked to have seen how it went. But looking at the standings now, um, we see Ben and Zach, the guys running the league, are having a great start to the season. Um, at the start of the week, Ben, Zach, myself, the other Ben, <laughs> and um, Josh. No, yeah, Josh. Were at the start of last week, we're all 2-0. and oh. And as you can see, there's only two undefeated teams left. So things are heating up. 
Um, only one winless team left, and the winless team, Kyle, has a ton of firepower. I guarantee he'll pick up some some wins and uh, finish strong. I'm pretty sure he made the playoffs last year. We got some people who are down here who are doing really well, who have uh, – are playing their first season. A few guys who have played a few seasons who I know are very capable of putting together some wins and making a playoff run. So things are spicing up. Uh, we've dropped down from the top top few all the way down to six. So we need to get things going again. So And you can kind of see the kill leaders here too. Um, I had Spectrier and Cartana at one game apiece up really high. And now they're dropping down the board. So i got to figure something out, get those boys back up. But real quick, just go... And look at our um, matchup for this coming week. So I played this battle on Sunday. Today is uh, Tuesday. So just recapping things real quick. Uh, looking at this, I did a little building earlier today. Very interesting matchup against SPAC and the NAS. I don't know if he's calling it NASCAR Blast, like NASCAR, or NASCAR Blast. Like, I don't know how to say it exactly, but very interesting team. Zerkatry, Suicune, Haxorus. Reggie Steele, Ninetales, Gigalith, Entei, Neuvern, um, I think could all come for sure. Uh, and then I think Tauros and Gallade are really good too. Really the only thing I don't see is Relicanth, but if I don't have some prep in for Relicanth, that's pretty tough too. But I don't want to say too much about what I'm thinking about bringing because, well, this video is going up before our battle. So, But you can kind of see... Um, start to put, to put together the matchups and see what what on my team might do well or not so well, what on his team might do well and not so well. Um, and you can see the entirety of my current team updated after dropping Dragonite and Steelix. Uh, I still stand behind the move. I still think <laughs> – this is still cracking me up. Steel, steel. You are a grass-type card, Tana. Stop lying to us. But I'm still, I'm still feeling good about the team, even though I switched it up and lost – but I lost to a great player. Uh, I still think I made the right moves. There are a few mons I'm considering replacing. Um, but I really don't want to say what. Just because that might that might sway um, what people think I'm bringing in my future battles. But there's a few things I'm looking at um, that I'm looking to possibly uh, switch out. I don't know. I, I like my team, but I also think it could still always be better. That's what free agency moves are for, so we'll just see. So anyway, I've kind of rambled in this video, so I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed the battle. Um, definitely, uh, and if, if, if Zach sees this, definitely everyone comment and tell him how well he did <laughs> to give a little encouragement there. But uh, let's hope I bounce back next week. I'm going to hop on out of here. Thank you for watching. Have yourself a great day. Peace.